to the City of Pocatello Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for Wednesday, January 24th, 2018. The Planning and Zoning Commission is a citizen advisory group to the City Council charged with making recommendations concerning land use plans, planning processes, and or on matters of plan implementation. All regular meetings of the Planning and Zoning Commission are recorded for record retention and transcription. The following is the official agenda of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, discussion and commission action will be limited to those items on the agenda. Any citizen who wishes to address the commission shall first be recognized by the chair and shall give his or her name and address for the record. If a citizen wishes to read documentation of any sort to the commission, he or she shall first seek permission from the chair. Oral testimony may be restricted to no more than three minutes per person. So agenda item number one is the roll call and disclosure of conflict of interest, ex parte communication and site visit. Uh, so we will have uh, Aislinn uh, call the roll and if each commissioner would please uh, state uh, their name, what area they are from and anything that they need to dis disclose. Jack Brennan. My name is Jack Brennan. I live in the Johnny Creek area. I did make a site visit to items three and four. I have nothing else to report. Bill Hancock. I'm Bill Hancock. I reside in the Lewis and Clark neighborhoods. I did make a site visit to agenda item number four and I have nothing else to report. Sean Hargraves. My name is Sean Hargraves. I reside in the university neighborhood. I did a site visit for agenda item number four and I have nothing else to report. Jack Moore. My name is Jack Moore. I live in the Old Town District. I did a site visit for agenda night item three and agenda item four, and I have nothing else to report. Sarah O'Connor. My name is Sarah O'Connor. I reside in the college neighborhood, and I have nothing else to report. Julia Sanders. My name is Julia Sanders. I live in the South Park area. I completed a site visit on agenda items three and four, and I have nothing else to report. Ryan Satterfield. I'm Ryan Satterfield from the Highland area. Uh, I did a site visit on agenda item number four, and nothing else to report. Very good. We will uh, move on to agenda item number two, approval of minutes. Um, commissioners, if there's any discussion that you would like to have about the minutes or a uh, motion, I would also entertain. A motion to approve the minutes. Second. Very good, it's been moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Moore, seconded by Brennan. Aislinn, would you call the vote? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Hancock? Yes. Hargraves? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Satterfield? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, agenda item number three, preliminary plat, SIA Tuscany Plaza subdivision. Uh, Mike Cordell of Strategic Investment Alliance, represented by Justin Steffler of Wade Surveying, has submitted a, a request to subdivide an existing building located at 444 Hospital Way, Building 100, into five condominium units located on Lot 1 and a portion of Lot 2, Block 1, Tuscany Professional Plaza. The land is located within a residential commercial professional zoning district. If we could start by hearing from the applicant. Justin Steffler, uh, 4141 South, 58 West, Idle Falls with Wade Surveying. Um, as you had described, we're the, our client is wanting to subdivide this building. Um, when you think of condominiums, you usually think of residential. This is going to be a professional condominium, basically going to condominiumize the suites to allow purchase of the different areas within the building. Um, it's within the zoning that the use is going to be within the zoning of that area so there's nothing too far out of the norm. Um, it is a two-story building. We plan on having five suites. Uh, and use the existing the existing parking lot it should be sufficient for what it is. So I'm um, pretty straightforward. Are there any questions? Uh, 
Doesn't look like it. Thank you. Carl, if we could have uh, the staff presentation. Uh, good evening, Commission. Carl Anderson, uh, City of Pocatello Planning and Development Services Department, for the record. Uh, tonight, you have before you a condominium preliminary plat for the SIA Tuscany Plaza Building 100, uh, submitted by uh, Wade Serving, or excuse me, by Strategic, strategic Investments, um, and represented by Wade Surveying. The preliminary plat is for a five unit uh, commercial condominium uh, with associated common space. The property is zoned residential, commercial, professional. Um, the building is existing. Uh, it was issued a building permit in 2017. Um, staff has reviewed the proposal and recommends approval of the preliminary plat for the proposed condominium at this time. With that, I'll answer any questions that the commission may have. Any questions for Carl? All right, thank you, Carl. Thank you. Very good, it's open for discussion now, commissioners. Any comments? Mr. Chair, agenda uh, item number three looks pretty straightforward. Uh, I would move that we uh, approve the preliminary pat, uh, plat for Tuscany Plaza subdivision as proposed. Very good. I'll second that. Excellent. So it's been moved by uh, Hancock, seconded by O'Connor. Uh, Aisling, would you call the vote? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Hargraves? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Yes. Motion carries. All right, agenda item number four, a public hearing for contract rezone. This time has been set aside for the commission to hear comments from the public regarding a request by Jeff Mufusio of Idaho Power Company to rezone by contract a parcel of vacant land in the northwest corner of Poline and Eldridge Roads and east of Faith Lutheran Church from residential commercial professional and residential medium density <coughs> single family to light industrial to be utilized for the sole use of a power substation. So if we could start by hearing from the applicant. Thank you. My name is Jeff Mucuccio with Idaho Power. My address is PO Box 70, Boise, Idaho, 83707. Thank you. I appreciate the time tonight. Uh, this is a project that's critical to um, the growth of Pocatello and, uh, and even the surrounding area, but also for customers uh, in terms of reliability and resiliency of the area for the electrical system. So a quick agenda just to go over kind of a brief overview of the electrical grid. Uh, the needs and objectives of the project, the site proposal, uh, standards evaluation um, through the zoning ordinance, and then just to wrap up uh, if there's any questions. So first is how the grid works. You know, typically we have um, in these types of for these types of transmission lines, we have a uh, a pole like this with multiple utilities: transmission, distribution and other utilities. And so transmission is moving electricity over the grid between substations uh, or from generation sources. Typically from generation sources, they're much larger in steel structures. Distribution is it's kind of like the local road. It's delivering electricity to customers from the substation. And other utilities, we share our poles with other providers, cable, phone, fiber. And so in between the transmission, distribution is a connection point, is the substation. Uh, so, you know, Idaho Power is here because uh, there's a lot of growth, a lot of potential growth in um, the Pocatello and the, the Chubbuck area. The, uh, um, sorry, this is, uh, you know, some information based on the Chamber of Commerce, the Bannock development. Um, you know, it's just, uh, there's a lot of opportunities here and we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, potential growth and a lot of potential interest in the area. And, and Idaho Power is tasked uh, as a regular monopoly or utility to, um, to be able to serve those customers as well as continue to serve our existing customers. And to do so, that requires upgrades of facilities and, and new facilities from time to time. <coughs> and so, you know, our, our overall objective as a company is to serve customers with reliable, responsible, and fair priced energy. So the project objectives we looked at, we looked primarily to serve this area um, is to enhance our service and, and safety by replacing outdated facilities 
such as this existing Bucyrus substation. It was built more than 50 years ago. It's on wood structures. It's, it, it really, there's not enough room to safely replace it or, or remodel it, make it new. Uh, we have other substations around the area, and they are, um, and we can show you a map later if you'd like, but they, they have distribution feeders that are serving customers um, throughout the area, whether it's in Bannock County, Pocatello, or um, Chubbuck. And, uh, and, and they're stretched thin to try to accommodate this, this, this high growth area with, within both jurisdictions, um, as well as serving customers around their surrounding area. And so we want to increase the capacity to serve within this area and um, also the reliability by interconnecting this new station with the existing uh, lines coming out of the existing stations. And, and so that, that provides reliability to customers, it pr provides increased capacity, and that allows for future growth opportunities. So as we zoom in a little bit, we, uh, we looked at several potential sites uh, with the considerations, um, as you see up here, uh, the area character, the compatibility with development, um, existing and future utilities and road plans, proximity to existing transmission lines, um, including an existing transmission line along Pole Line Run, which we intend to rebuild, and uh, the ability to serve effectively, and finally, um, being able to acquire a property in a timely manner. We're, we're really up against the wall in, in many regards of being able to have this station service to provide customers, um, you know, with all the growth, whether it's uh, data centers or you know different types of facilities, we need to be able to serve that. Um, so we looked at several different options. Um, this was our original site here on the uh, uh, Gateway West Industrial Park. Um, that's been tied up in a, in a legal. Um, it's been tied up in court for quite some time, and, and trying to work with uh, owners on that uh, was very difficult. We spent more than a year trying to, to get to that point, and, and so we started looking at other opportunities. And, and really, this is this site, the proposed site is, I don't know what I just did. Uh, the proposed project site is about as far south as we're able to go um, The proposed product site, it's about as far south as you're able to go if you're able to look at some of the exhibits in the application, the staff report. And my screen's blinking here. I don't know what's going on. But um, you might try unplugging it and plugging it back in. <laughs> It's the worst. Ryan, I didn't okay. know that you worked in IT. Well, all, the information's available in your, in your packet, so we can continue with that. So um, we looked at several sites. Uh, there is a map in our narrative that shows those, uh, those project locations, um, but we, we really could not go any further we really can't go any further south. I mean, there's something. We really couldn't go any further south uh, without being able to effectively serve. And and our project engineer here, Tim, can can get into the details of that if, if you'd like. To. Um, so the project site is approximately 1.2 acres. It's located in the northwest corner of Pole Line Road in West Eldridge. The location meets several of the considerations for the substation site. Um, with the exception of having the uh, appropriate zoning right now, and that's for our request. We, uh, we worked with the Faith Lutheran Church of the owners of that site to um, purchase the property. Uh, we currently have an option with them, but um, we, uh, that was decided upon by their congregation uh, on December 18, 2017. You know, we're just going to leave it at that. <laughs> uh, so I apologize, it's a little harder to see now. 
So, uh, and we can go back, but so this is the entire project site. This is at a full build out. We, we could say this full build out maybe 25, 30 years down the road. Uh, depending on growth, it could be as soon as 15. Um, but so right here is a Faith Lutheran Church. There are two houses here that uh, were recently um, vacated uh, due to some property um, ownership and, and uh, septic concerns. There is another residence right here, uh, kind of hidden in this grove of trees. There's a residence here. There is small commercial here, um, I believe right here, and then this, this is uh, part of the industrial park, uh, just to give you an idea of the surrounding area. Boy, I'm gonna attempt this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it would have been nice. Um, I, I'd like to be able to show you what the different components of the station are like. Um, if you can, uh, you can, oh, there we go. Okay, well, I'm gonna read these out to you. They're a little difficult to read, but starting at the top. So this is the uh, outer fence line. Um, as we've described, and I'll show you an image in a minute, but it's a, uh, Proposes a concrete precast panels. Uh, the the colors and material can be uh, worked upon with. We, you know, we did. Uh, we told the church we'd work with them on that, but we also know that's part of a design approval uh, with the city as well. So we expect to continue that. And there's there's several different options we can look at. Um, so right here is a control building. It's approximately 28 by 30 feet at single level, and then this. You see these lines here, that's all underground. That's uh, the ducting, the cable ducts for the communication and the um, control wires. Right here is what we call a uh, bus structure. And that's this is uh, all the switch gear. This is um, where, the, where the power comes out onto the distribution feeders to serve customers locally. Um, and this is all within a um, confined building. Looks like a just a big metal uh, trailer almost uh, with no wheels. And then we have uh, the transformer. We have a transformer down here, um, the breaker over here, and and the dead end structure. This is uh, where the transmission line comes in across Pole Line Road, and then would come down here. So we have another one here proposed. Again, this would be like a 15 to 20 to 25 year um, to install the second one at a later date, as the growth requires. Um, finally, we have what we so we, when we space out these substations, we want to plan for like anything we might need in there. <coughs> right here we have located, it's in gray, um, it's what we call a mobile transformer. So in 20 years we need to work on this transformer, you know, refurbish it, we can bring in a mobile transformer on a trailer. We can, we can put it in there, hook it up temporarily for a week or so, and then pull it back out. And we keep these stored at um, uh, like our operations center in Boise or Twin Falls or places like that. We do have two uh, proposed wrought iron gates. Uh, we do have two because it allows during, primarily during construction for um, the safe entry and egress of uh, long trailers uh, without, having, with two, without having to back a trailer back out onto the road or you know, to minimize traffic impacts. Um, we expect once constructed, we would, we would rarely use access through the gate, uh, and, and if so, be with a pickup truck, typically. Um, so this is kind of what our typical 138 kilovolt substation looks like. This is located near Eagle in a residential commercial area. Uh, right here is that, is that bus structure. Uh, this is the dead end structure, and the transformers are back here. Um, this is an eight foot chain link security fence. Again, we'll be uh, going with a uh, fence that has complete, um, uh, completely obscures at least up to eight feet. So you may see the top of the dead end, but um, the transformers are about eight feet tall uh, on their foundation. And then the control building is back here and it's a little difficult to see, but again, that's about um, typically eight to 12 feet, depending on the nature of the terrain. And, and that, that building is made out of uh, typically brick, like the large brick. 
so we have a couple of proposals here. This would be the type of fencing we would use. Uh, this, we don't do this very often. We did recently construct this fencing at the uh, College of Western Idaho campus in, in uh, Nampa, um, substation right there on campus. So we use this type of fencing to, um, again, make, make it blend in a little more with its surroundings. And then these uh, 30 foot wrought iron gates with the, you know, uh, basically a command door. Um, so if we don't need to open the full gate, we can park the truck on the driveway apron, adequately, adequately clearing the sidewalk and the road and, and uh, someone can enter in. It's important to note that um, we don't intend to have any lighting, uh, dust to dawn lighting. Um, I don't know, uh, Tim can clarify if we ever do any motion detector based lighting or for security purposes, but I don't believe we typically do when there's adequate street lighting in the area. So to just go over the standards, um, generally, you know, we um, believe this uh, request, it, it meets the community's best interests uh, for a zoning request. It, um, with growth in the area, it's driving the need for this new substation to serve existing and future customers. Uh, the location became the most viable in terms of um, several items, electrical system planning, minimizing uh, overhead lines in and out of the station, and uh, the ability for Idaho Power to procure the property in a timely manner to serve customers. Um, we expect that there will be no additional costs borne to the public or to the city um, for operating the substation. Uh, and, you know, as growth continues, we have to do these types of projects. Uh, doing nothing does have a cost uh, in terms of um, increasing the operation and maintenance costs on our system, overloading the system, and and limiting the ability for the city to uh, reach its economic development goals. Uh, finally, um, the uh, you know we expect that this is a reason you know at, it's proposed as a rezone by contract and and so it that means it only allows for an electrical substation as part of this rezone. There's nothing else allowed under the light industrial um, as we've requested. So if Idaho Power were to not build it, then it stays a field unless someone else does something like that. Uh, and we do believe it would blend in with existing land uses. Um, the, uh, you know, the concrete fencing helps to uh, blend in better with some of the brick structures in the area. Uh, the, it's light industrial in, in nature and that, and that is very compatible with the uses across the street at the um, industrial park. And, and the site is uh, physically suitable for uh, this type of property you saw there's plenty of room and it allows for at least you know 50 year operation, <coughs> operational life. Um, so as indicated in our site plan you know we'll be located uh, everything will be located as far away from um, adjacent structures as possible within that site. Uh, I do want to be clear on the zoning that we actually do cover two zones. We have about a 40 to 30 foot strip of RMS and then the remainder is RCP. And again, the light industrial is here on the east side. Um, we will be responsible for providing services to operate the station. Again, we will not uh, rely on city services or uh, the cost from the city to help uh, make this project happen. Uh, we do not believe there'll be any impact on existing public services or adjacent properties. We we operate the station uh, remotely. We we monitor it. Uh, we're able to monitor it, you know, from our local office here, um, and we have you know someone always patrolling our different facilities. Um, and we do not believe there'll be any undesirable effects such as odors, fumes, or vibrations from the station. Um, final, and we'll get a little more detail on this in the next slide, but but noise is always a concern and. Um, Transformers just by itself, you know, if you're standing right up against it, they cannot exceed uh, 65 decibels per federal regulations. But um, and this is difficult to see, so I do apologize, but I wanted to look at the noise from some different levels. So at six feet from the transformer, it's approximately 59 decibels. And that puts it right here at what would be considered a normal conversation or a quiet office. Um, you know, you get some background typing, some phone calls from about 20 feet away. Um, that's what they consider to be a typical office environment. At approximately 135 feet or to the edge of the, 
to the edge of the property um, from the transformers, primarily from the existing residences or the church property, it's approximately 43 decibels. And, and on this chart, it indicates that would be a uh, like a burbling brook or a stream or a uh, refrigerator humming. Not my 30-year-old refrigerator, but probably a more modern one. <laughs> and then uh, at the at the max noise level um, at 210 feet, which we which we calculated for um, the folks at the Faith Lutheran Church up to their front door, be approximately 37 decibels. And that's um, this this says whisper, and so it's right around the whisper, like five stop talking without the door squeaking somewhere. That would be you know in that range. Uh, finally, just you know, to go over the the use um, as it would be compatible with uh, the um, adjacent land uses, we you know we've designed to be compatible with the setbacks and standards of the RCP and RMS zone. Um, we do not feel it will look dense with steel and wires. It won't look um, as industrial. Some of our substations, um, you know, that are more for the transmission level service, uh, or will it be full of wires and steel. Uh, and then we'll use uh, the water efficient landscaping and the fencing, the wrought iron gates to uh, help it look more compatible with adjacent current and future land uses. And finally, uh, just to go over the, you know, the purpose of the um, rezone by contract, it's to authorize only the electrical substation in the light industrial zone. An amendment to the comprehensive plan or the comprehensive plan map would not be required and is not requested. Uh, and again, just the proposals, again, full build out, the, uh, the transmission line coming in here, the transformer, future second transformer, the bus structure housed in a metal, uh, you know, low height building, the control building, and that mobile transformer if we ever to need that. Uh, and with that, I'll stand for any questions. Or you want to do that after? And, and right now is fine. I do have one question for you, yes, Jeff. Um, so this 1.2 acres, how does that, for the, the equipment that you have here, how does that compare to other substations? Is 1.2 like more than what some of your other substations are that have the same amount of equipment or about average? Or? It, it's about average. I mean, some, sometimes we'll, we'll like a little more room um, uh, depending on what we can get, you know, but we, this definitely provides adequate uh, space for us to be able to operate safely and move vehicles inside the station. Um, and again, we typically don't do more than two transformers in a more of a suburban um, type of setting like this. Uh, we have substations that are much larger to serve uh, major industrial type of customers, but, but for, this, for this need, this is pretty typical. Very good, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, Jeff, it's my understanding that, that precast concrete fence will go completely around the perimeter except for the gates. Yes, sir. Is that correct? And yes, that's sir. what, eight feet high? Yeah, about approximately eight feet high. I have a question. What's yes, your plan B if this doesn't get approved? Our plan B? Yeah. Uh, well, this is like plan C. <laughs> So, uh, you know, that's something we'll, we'll need to continue to work on then. So you have no other options in place? We are, our, our options are very limited right now, yes. So this is supposed to be replacing the Bucyrus substation plus going a little bit further, is that correct? Correct. So How the, much further? Um, let me... Hopefully this works. The the uh, Bucyrus substation again is uh, um, it's very outmoded, very outdated. Uh, this is a very colorful map. Um, the Bucyrus substation covers just a small little area, and and so it would be able to really pick up a lot of the slack from this is a Siphon substation, the Highland substation, Poku, Alameda. That's the big one at, down at the intersection here further down Pocatello. And so this is a, a lot of this is covered by the siphon <coughs> substation. It'll be able to pick up from here, pick up a lot of this area um, and, and to alleviate those 
those existing substations. It'll, again, it'll uh, pick up the Bucyrus load right here, this little skinny part. Yeah, I, I may have Tim here. Uh, so the, the capacity of the, sorry, my name's Tim Phillips on the project. And if you'd step up so the okay. microphone can pick up your. Just to kind of give you a perspective. Um, so the initial build out, we would put in a 40 megawatt transformer. The Bucyrus substation, I believe, has a 20 megawatt transformer. Ultimate build out of the substation, would, when we added the second one, would be about 80 <coughs> megawatts. So. So right now you have a Bucyrus has a capacity of about 20. I don't know if Jeff Burton is here, but so in, in in the long term growth, you know we're we're going almost, you know, looking out 25, 30 years where you'd have almost four times the ability in that in that area. So. Good question. Um, so part of this area now is being served by the siphon. Substation, and your is your one of your hopes to be able to transfer some of that power out that's, into that's the good. new Northgate addition. That's one of the reasons. I'm not this sure is where is. Northgate is. <coughs> the, the, the plan community. Yeah. 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 So that that would be picked up by Siphon or Highland substation. Yeah. Okay. The the Siphon feeders are really <coughs> at their they really can't carry much more of that load. They're, they're carrying that load down there in the, in the Chubbuck area, and they're we're really maxed out on that. So this is gonna come and help transfer that load off, which will also allow more growth in the, the Highland. Highland is maxed out too, uh, so the, those areas can grow. What do you mean? So, would it be fair to say that this project, should it go through, would be the only substation that would need to be redone in the next 25-ish years? I mean, depending on growth, right? right. But in this area, I okay. Would, yeah, and I, I would have. We, Jim Burdick is our planning engineer, and I don't think he's here. Nathan Smith. Yeah, he's not. He's, but yeah. in our case, did drive something else too. Yeah, I, th I think, um, you know, based on current growth projections, I would say that's true. However, you could have something really big come in a little further north of Highland or, uh, you know, that, that may require either upgrades at the Highland substation or something up in that area to uh, accommodate that type of growth. Are there any plans? Uh, what are the plans for the... the Current substation. Once it's, uh, it, once it's it, it would be uh, removed and out of service. So it would just be raised. Yeah. So right now, I, I wish we had a picture of it. But it's it's wood. It's wood uh, has wood structures attached to the side of the warehouse. I mean, it's it's very antiquated. It's really not safe to operate any further. So I think over time we would we would remove it. We would be able to pick up the, there's another station called Alameda that was on the southeast part of that. And right here. Yeah, with, by taking some of the pressure off of Alameda with this substation, we would be able to, to bring a distribution feeder into Bucyrus and then transfer that load. Some of the load that Bucyrus has would also transfer to this station too. So it would be a combination of shipping. It, it, we end up having a loop system that connects all these stations together at some point. Yes, sir. It's a lot less technical than the questions you've been asked, but I notice eight foot fence and I notice pictures of other typical substations with a chain link. link. They had landscaping and other things to beautify around it. Is that part of what you do to blend it in and hide it in this area that would have residential? In other words, it's nice to have a wall, but it also, you know, prisons have walls. But right. uh, if you have uh, other things to beautify it, um, you know, it was. Uh, we could certainly explore other options. I think we'd want to uh, make sure that folk representatives from Faith Lutheran were part of that conversation. It was it was one of the things that they they wanted to look for. They wanted us to look for uh, opportunities to mitigate any visual. Um, impact associated with the with the substation. But certainly I mean we could look at different types of yeah. 
I'm, you want to pass that to him? It's the Osiris. Can, I don't know if we can have this on the record, but we have a picture of the Bucyrus substation. Yeah, if you'd like to come forward and just kind of... Thank you. Um, so, you know, we, we've used different, uh, based on different jurisdictional uh, requirements, landscaping requirements, we we built berms. Uh, there's not a lot of room available at this site to build, you know, a nice berm with trees on top, but we've done that. We've used slatted fences. Uh, we find slatted fences, they, they deteriorate pretty quickly with the weather. Um, and the wind usually blows slats through. Um, so there are other options. We, we would like to make sure that um, if city staff would like us to explore other options, that we um, we do so in partnership with the with Faith Lutheran Church. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if we could now have Carl uh, give the staff report. Carl Anderson, City of Pocatello Planning Development Services Department again for the record. Uh, as noted in the agenda and described by the applicant, this application is for the rezone by contract of approximately 1.2 acres of land located northwest of the intersection of Poline and Eldridge Road. The property is currently zoned residential commercial professional with approximately 40, a 40 foot strip of land that it has a residential medium density single family zoning. Uh, the applicant is requesting a rezone by contract to light industrial for the sole use uh, for an electrical substation. Uh, the applicant is Ido Power, who has an option with Faith Evangelical Lutheran Church uh, for the subject property. Per staff's analysis, um, under the criteria for review, staff concludes that development is indeed compatible in terms of scale, mass, coverage, density, or intensity with the surrounding land uses. Uh, with the finding that the applicant has taken reasonable steps in working with area property owners to locate the substation and avoid the rezone of the subject property. Had the applicant been able to secure property directly to the east of the subject property, the, uh, the, property, the proposed use would be permitted outright. The applicant will provide adequate screening uh, and landscaping as noted and anticipated to create the appearance to not create the appearance of light. Um, excluding construction, the substation is not anticipated to generate a significant traffic impact. And st staff also finds that it is supported within the City of Pocatello 2015 Comprehensive Plan. Uh, at this time, all noticing requirements have been met. Uh, two public com written public comments have been received and are included in the packet, and phone calls have been received. Um, at this time, staff recommends approval of the application and plans as presented. Um, that concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions that the Commission may have. Thank you, Carl. Any questions for Carl? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, uh, we will move into the public hearing portion. Um, just as a reminder uh, for the public hearing, uh, you're limited to three minutes. Uh, the way that we will proceed with the public hearing is we will start with any who are in favor. We will then move to any who are neutral on the application, and then we will end with any who are opposed to the application. Um, and so I will go ahead and now open the public hearing. And so if there are any who would like to speak in favor of the application, uh, please come forward and you can state your name and address. And sign. Yes, and, and yes. sign in if you haven't signed in already, if you do choose to speak. Okay, seeing none, if there are any that are neutral on the application that would like to give any public testimony. Seeing none, any that are opposed to the application and would like to give testimony, please come forward. Thank you. Okay, I'm Sheila Griffiths. I live at 887 Lot or 887 Lot Road. Um, first of all, I want to say I'm not a big fan of rezoning this property. I think it serves our residential neighborhood better as it is now. But if it goes through, Idaho Power and the city of Pocantello need to figure out how to buy 15 feet of property that lines the south side of the proposed substation. And that is on the Eldridge side of the street. Um, when I learned about this, I thought, my word, what would become of that 15 feet? I asked Cara Miller, can you put a trailer house there? Nope, it's too narrow, too small. 
Can you put um, storage units there? No, nope, can't do that. So what's the plan for it? Right now it's a bunch of weeds, and it has been the whole time I've lived in the neighborhood. But with this, but there was always hope that it was going to be beautiful someday with whatever was built there. Well, if this, if nobody buys it, it's going to stay with the same owner who's not taken any care of it. The church has been caring for it as they mow, mowed their weeds, and the city would have to get after them to mow their weeds. And the property owner that now has it, I understand, passed away. <coughs> he didn't take care of it. Who's going to take care of it? Um, I know that somebody just said today that Idaho Power sometimes has a bigger space for this type of a subunit, so it could be enlarged with that extra 15 feet, um, and then they could maintain it, and it would look as beautiful as their landscaping around it. The city also needs that property. It's been in the works that they want a turning lane to turn on to Eldridge to take some of the traffic off of Pole Line. That congestion, that spot gets lots of wrecks. Um, with that turning lane, it might even save some of the power poles that they put in from being in the wreck because of the construction. So both of them need to work together to figure out what to do with this piece of property so that it doesn't become just a wasteland. Um, it might someday get turned over for lack of taxes being paid, but by then, Idaho Power can't utilize it. And the way they need to utilize it the best is on the north side of their supposed substation is a house that's only, their property is only about nine feet away from the church property right now. I wouldn't want to be the house that's that close to this, <coughs> even though it's supposed to be a beautiful brick wall and that close to the noise. So if they bought it and could move their substation over 15 feet, it would be better for the homeowners that are there. And if the city worked with them so that they could get their turning lane, I think it would solve a lot of problems. Um, Idaho Power has talked about they are now planning for the future. They're not going to use this all right now. They're planning for what they want to do. And I want the city to plan how to get their turning lane and have this piece of property maintained by Idaho Power for the rest that they don't need. So it would serve both of them to take care of that property now. And it needs to be part of this plan of how to <coughs> take care of that 15 feet. Um, we want that corner to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty with the power pole, I mean a substation. But if you can take that 15 feet and beautify it, it's going to help that much better. Also, um, we don't want gravel in there. You all remember what Pocatello Creek exit looked like when it was slag or gravel? And it looked horrible. Now they've got it into grass. We don't want that strip being the sore spot. Um, also, with when they move that over, that's going to give, I think I already said this, but the houses on, on the north side will be that much farther away from it. Also, is there going to be a sidewalk on Poline in front of this? It didn't show it in the picture, um, but I think that would be a good thing. And But there's also an irrigation ditch that runs along Poline. It's now enclosed in a pipe, but it's pretty long stretch. How is it going to be cleaned out? Have they figured out that? Because as irrigators, um, a big problem is when a pipe fills up with dirt and then the water flow isn't good. So that needs to be addressed as to how that's going to be taken care of. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, I would like someone from both the city and Idaho Power to contact me about this issue so it's not just dropped. Um, who, anybody know who I, that my person might be? You've made the testimony and so we will reach out to you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, any others that would uh, like to testify? Yeah. 
pat smith you can put it down as l n p if you absolutely have to my government name i live at eight fifty one lock road and when i was born that's where they took me from the hospital so if you want any war stories about that neighborhood just give me a call or dwight crandall there on the end we'll tell you all sorts of interesting stuff so um i too am not in favor of rezoning the corner not because i'm against the station or anything i think idaho power's done a, a fabulous job of trying to solve this difficult problem and as carl pointed out if they could get nlp an nlp location <coughs> it would be a no-brainer. It would be in there immediately because it's already light industrial. And we've lived with that our whole lives and there's always been pole line road between us and what's light industrial. Now we're asking to open the gate and bring it across the road. So my concern, I have several concerns, but one of those is that this will not be the last time this commission will be having a request for light industrial across the road. And I really thank all of you who have done a site visit because you saw that the Nixon Acres uh, neighborhood that we live in is not a typical housing development area. We still have livestock, we still have a lot of trees. People walk down our road and go, wow, I didn't even know this was here, this is great. And we enjoy that. We have a slightly different lifestyle. We spend a lot of time outside, especially irrigating. 3 a.m., you know, so we love it. You must love it. So um, I think that Idaho Power has done a really good job of meeting the ordinances and the comprehensive plan and I would okay their request in a moment if it were not that this corner is already correctly zoned. It's zoned the way everybody else along there is. Someone could live there, someone could have a, a small business there, or someone could have a professional office, and we would applaud it. But opening the door for other light industrial is really not in the best interest of the people who live there pay taxes there and have a concern that should we want to uh, move to arizona and sell our property this will limit property uh, I'm not so much concerned about the actual value i'm concerned about the people who uh, are going to drive by see a pa uh, the substation and keep driving. So my concern is it's going to limit the number of potential buyers of the, of the properties. Um, and I, Pat, I really appreciated your question about Plan B because I am completely confident that if this corner were not available, Idaho Power would find a place for this substation. And what I'm asking the Commission to do and Idaho Power to do is to look a little further, to explore at least a little further two places that I know of. Um, Sheila, my neighbor, and I went over to NLP and said, if we can't get them in the fence, can we get them just outside the fence? And I do know that Idaho Power has talked to the people who own the NLP park where the baseball diamonds are. And there's a lot of ground out there. I'd like them to look a little closer at that. It's already on the east side. And if they could get a slice, it would be great. In addition, there is another church that is west of this location. Um, Your time is kind of OK. Here. And, um, I would like them to explore that one also. Oh, the time is up. Yeah, I was looking over there saying how much time do I have left. Never mind. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, thank you.
any others that would like to give testimony? Very good. We will now close the public hearing and uh, we would invite the applicant uh, to come back up and address or rebut any comments if they choose. Thank you. I'm going to let Tim answer. Sure. sure. Uh, yeah, Tim Phillips again. Uh, I was taking notes. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank Sheila uh, for your uh, thoughts on the 15 foot strip. We would. I don't power propose to, to work with the city to, to come with agreement on, on what the future road plans are on Eldridge and see if we can't accommodate the fence shifting a little farther south and including that into our landscape uh, activities rather than leaving that 15 foot strip. Um, so uh, I don't know if our real estate group had time to, to contact. Sometimes it's, uh, it's difficult to get a hold of property owners and when they're deceased, um, a lot of times we get nothing but a mailing address. So um, we haven't had a lot of time to, to look into that, but that would be something that we would definitely uh, entertain. Uh, so, and then with regards um, to EPATH, uh, Mrs. Smith's comments, um, boy, I tell you, we, we have, exhausted uh we've worked looked at different site locations for over a year and knocked on doors and looked at all the different things uh, places that we could possibly cite this this site is where we're proposing now is really on the south edge of where we want to be would really prefer to be a little farther north uh, electrically uh, when you the, the transmission line comes in and then the distribution lines go out and they really have a certain distance as you can imagine you start get voltage drop a certain distance before they can't sustain that sort of load anymore and this is really at the south boundary where we want to be moving farther uh, east or west off a of pole uh, pole line doesn't help the situation so we would prefer to be up near the, the ideal location would be up near the corner of, of, of pole line and, and Quinn and so we're really down there uh, and there's just we've looked around there knocked on doors and, and try to find a willing seller and it just hasn't been as you can imagine not the easiest thing to, to cite so thank you oh yes and uh, Jeff brought up that. We did go take a look. We've looked at the canal, and right now it's, it's piped. Of course, we only need to get across that right at the gates. And so uh, we will we'll work with uh, the canal companies and, and make sure that those are easily maintained in the future. Look, looked at the, our gate, our fence will be um, far enough uh, west off of pole lines so that uh, a truck can pull in off of, you know, we're talking like a line bed or equipment truck that you see, uh, have room to get off a of pole line before it hits the gate. We won't want to be stopped in the lane of traffic. So there will be space there. It looks like the, the pipe there is just maybe 10, 15 feet off the shoulder of the road. And our fence is going to be on past that. So we'll take a look at how that uh, that culvert is, the capacity of it, and make sure that it's, it's truck rated. Uh, our trucks aren't any heavier than you know, HS20 trucks loading that you'd see going down there so um, we'll make sure that those are sized accordingly and work with uh, the irrigation canal company to make sure that that's uh, it's at least in the same condition that it is in today or better after we're done building the site exactly. can I ask a question on the sidewalks now looking there in that area and also being familiar with it I don't see sidewalks along that stretch a pole line currently but if that was something that the city did down the road, would there be sufficient space to put a sidewalk <coughs> along that? That uh, I guess it would be the east portion of, of uh, the substation, so that a sidewalk could go in there and connect with other sidewalks along that road. Yeah, I, like I said, I, our fence is going to have to be at least back space for the, the truck to pull in before the gate. And I, you're talking probably a four foot sidewalk. Uh, we'll make sure that we work on it. I'm trying to remember the uh, city engineer's name, but I've been in contact with him a couple times to make sure that there's space and future plans uh, to get that back far enough for sidewalks. So, Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. 
Very good. Any discussion, commissioners? I got a question for the staff. Okay. Um, Carl, so would you come forward? We invite Merrill to come forward also for some questions. Yep, Merrill, would you like to come forward? So there was a comment made about this potentially opening up the floodgates with the rezone to light industrial. With this being a contract rezone and the comprehensive plan zoning map not being changed, could that actually happen? Uh, the comprehensive plan still designates the property and at least the portion that's currently is on residential commercial professionals mixed use. So um, there would have to be a complex <coughs> amendment for that to happen and at this time, um, per Matthew, my discussion, we didn't die. It's not on at least our radar that this portion of this neighborhood will be rezoned to light industrial. For that to happen, you'd have to get a series of contract rezone applications that would go through this process. Um, it seems unlikely. That, does that also mean that if, let's say that Idaho Power, <coughs> that this is recommended to the city council, the city council approves, but Idaho Power decides to abandon this site because something's opened up across the street that then becomes more viable? Does that mean that the Kirk? it won't be light uh, industrial over there, it, it will be abandoned because this is a contract? In other words, they can't, no one else can come in and say, well, now this is light industrial. It's going to be RCP. Yeah, basically. Uh, the condition as it's currently crafted is that upon cessation of the substation, um, it will go before the city council and be rezoned to the most appropriate. Now, if the condition could be recrafted to include that if it is never built to make sure it catches that other front end or to at least set a time frame there, that may be a good amendment to that condition. I guess the only thing, because I understand yes. by contract is sort of built in. It's contracted for this specific purpose, and they're the only ones that are going to build a substation. If the substation is not built, then it stays a vacant lot, and no one else can come in and say, well, no, this is industrial. They're stuck with office buildings, residential, what would fall within the current zoning. That's correct. Okay. And did you have a question for Merrill? Did you? Uh... Yeah, if you wouldn't mind come forward, Merrill, just because questions have been raised about the sidewalks, okay. and I know that's always a concern, but I don't currently see sidewalks along that stretch of road. Is that correct? Or uh, Merrill Coyle, public works engineer for the city of Pocatello. Along the west side of Pole Line, you've seen it is very sporadic uh, to no sidewalks. But where some of the businesses have gone in in the last 10, 15 years, uh, you'll see a chunk of curb and gutter that's offset in the back, and there's curb and, and there's sidewalk behind that. So this is no different. Uh, in talking with the engineers for Idaho Power and that, I believe it's my understanding they're fully aware that uh, that improvement would need to be there, and there would be actually a five-foot sidewalk per our code for a. Uh, uh, arterial street that's there. So. so if this moves forward, then there'll be curb and gutter and sidewalk there, just that, like any other. That would be the design, yes. And then right. also, uh, there's been some discussion, and I know the city can't say anything on it now, but <coughs> as to that intersection, do you have any thoughts or opinion whether this may make it easier for the city to consider options of a turn lane there at that intersection with a the current design? We have looked at uh, a few of those options and uh, we know that that intersection and that signal is, is getting outdated and needs some attention right now. It's, it's on a list, but it's not on a formal list with budget attached to it and moving forward with the plan. So uh, we can continue to look at that, but uh, as this plan come in, we would look at and make sure there's still enough clear zone as made mention is that the fence will be set back far enough or something, you know, so trucks can get completely off the road and uh, and means of, of, of that to, to take place. So we will look at some of those options, but uh, there's no plan with the signal or anything there. So putting a turn lane in, we're gonna be running into signal poles and stuff too. So that, that takes into some, bigger items than just looking at, at their site at this time, but we'll definitely look at that as it comes forward. Thank you. Uh, will there be a problem with the sidewalk and the irrigation canal? 
Uh, there's many places around this town that's an irrigation ditch that is underneath the uh, sidewalks that nobody's aware of. And the um, problem is a very <coughs> flexible word. Very good. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. May I have one more thing? I just want to commit to the record and to Ms. Griffith and, and everyone else that Idaho Power will continue to work with them through this process. Um, whether approved or not. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Discussion, commissioners? You know, when I first went and, right. and drove out there. Can he have some written? Can he turn it in? So the public hearing has been closed, and so it is no longer open for that. Um, you know, when I first went and looked at this property, it wasn't super exciting to have a, a power substation there. You know, obviously across the street is, is a much more ideal location, and I think everybody agrees with that. It's very unfortunate that, it, you know, it's not turning out that way, I guess, as a viable option <coughs> for them. Um, I do like the, you know, the fencing concept uh, to be able to kind of uh, uh, hide some of that equipment that sits back there. I think that that is very helpful. Um, but uh, yeah, having this in, you know, next to homes and stuff isn't ideal by any means. <coughs> any other thoughts? Well, I have. I have a thought on this. Um, you know, Pocatello is growing, and utilities like the power company and the gas company have have really got to plan way ahead. Um, while I've been on the commission, <coughs> the gas company came in and wanted to put a, a pumping substation uh, in Indian Hills, and there were a lot of objections and. As it's turned out, it's, it's actually quite nice. They have fenced it very similar to this. Um, you know, if you're walking on the greenway, you can see it, but in the neighborhood itself, you can't. And uh, while it's not ideal, uh, I think there are some things that, that can be done in the building process, and they still have to go uh, to the city planning and zoning. And I think those things can be worked out. That's just my opinion. I, I will state here for the record that uh, while I live in the Lewis and Clark neighborhoods uh, now, that's only been a few months. Previously, I lived up on Canyon Drive by uh, closer, close to a much larger substation and was only a few houses away from that substation. Uh, I heard no noise from it. I could see it above some shrubbery. I could see some of the towers. and other things associated because they didn't have a fence or anything that's close to what's uh, being uh, put in and the considerations given on this current one. And I, I sort of liken it to power poles. No one ever wants a power pole out by their house, but when I ride down the street, I don't see power poles. I see houses, I see neighborhoods, I see businesses. And the power lines just become sort of like a white noise that fades into the background and is not something I see. And I, I think the similar type concerns, there's always that initial reaction of, well, I don't want that next to me. We all want power, but we don't want the substation next to us. But I think when it's done, when it's beautified and the types of things that you were talking about, Jack, I think it sort of just becomes a white noise. It, it hides in the background and it becomes no more seen or visible than the power light, power poles are down the road, you know. And so I, I am cognizant of the concerns, but also having lived close to one, I recognize their ability to fade back and your neighborhood, your friends, your quality of life all resumes back to a, a normalcy um, because like the the appliances that hum in our house, we just don't hear them anymore because that's noise that's there. And it, it's not something that disturbs us. So, uh, I, I uh, am, would move that we approve the contract rezone has been submitted. Or not approve it, but that we would recommend to the city of council to approve it. And that we would authorize you as the chair to sign the, finding, uh, the findings of fact and submit the recommendation to the city council. I have a motion. I'll second that. 
Excellent. So it's been moved and seconded. Hastlin, would you call the vote? Hancock? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Hargraves? Yes. Moore? No. Sanders? Yes. Satterfield? Yes. Motion carries. And so that everybody is aware, like uh, Commissioner Hancock said, this does go to the City Council and uh, will be uh, uh, addressed there. They will get to make the final decision. Uh, we appreciate everybody who's come out tonight and, uh, and shared their um, thoughts on, on this subject. So with that, uh, we will now uh, adjourn. Thank you. Thank you.